Well, I saw him grow from grace to grace. <laughs> so I saw this guy walking in and could only read music, never created one piece of music when he walked in the school 35 years ago. And I said, do you do music automatically? And he says, what do you mean? I mean, that's that was what he where he was 35 years. He was a master musician from Rice, but he was a master at reading book music composed on sh on sheet music. And he was very good. He was first chair with the top five symphony in the in the in the country. And he played right next to the concert master. Him and the concert master were really good. He did that for seven years, the first seven years that he uh, trained with me. And so he started doing figure eights and Tai Chi swim, and all of a sudden his right brain exploded. <laughs> and he came in one day. He said, I got this idea for music. And I said, go for it. Go for it. And so he went and started playing it and this came out and that came out and, you know, he produced like 10 or 12 CDs. And not only was he learning the instruments and how to take instruments to a different level, but electronically he was learning how to record this stuff. So he was learning as much on the computer. The computer was like his eighth instrument. And as he grew with his music, his ability to record one day, he says, you know what? I can, do the piano and then i can go back and put the violin on top of it and the other day we were talking about he's going to start doing some pieces of music where he's going to overlap all seven of the so we'll call david paul master david paul the orchestra david paul because he'll be his own orchestra right but what really i knew he shifted about seven years with me uh, and doing his Tai Chi. And he was religious about doing his Tai Chi. He, he never missed a day from like the first couple of months. He just never missed a day of practice. He knew what you guys knew, that he might do a lot of things, but he would miss a meal before he would miss 40 minutes of Tai Chi God. So he, the, this couple one day decide they're going to get married. And he says, Okay, I'll play the traditional stuff you wanted me to do. I just asked one thing. He said, what? Well, I want to get in your energy, and I want to produce a special piece of the love and affection, um, love and affection that you guys share together, the two of you. And so from that point on, he really shifted gear. Now he's getting into people's energy fields, and he's producing on them and he would record that and imagine mm -hmm. having a wedding and then a musician has recorded the love between the vibration of love between the two couple mm -hmm. and this was an incredible gift right incredible but that's when he went into a whole different arena initially his challenge is what I see with a lot of people. He came to me one day before he'd ever recorded his first piece of music. And he said, I can't produce a, a record something. And I said, why not? He said, well, it's just not going to be good enough. And I said, so what? And he said, what? I said, well, you don't understand the Trinity of God. I said, one part of God's the creator. And he creates and creates and creates and creates. The other part of God, the Holy Spirit, is the sustainer, mm. right? And then there's the destroyer, the surgeon. I said, I want you, and I hit, you know, it's funny, being David and knowing David, the Psalms, and the Bible says we are what our name is, okay? So I said, the first time I ever told this story, I said, David, I said, you remember Michelangelo's David? He said, yeah. I said, this is what I want you to pretend to do when you're producing music, that he is solid, but the surface of him is still wet. And you're going to walk out to David every day and you're going to well, maybe I'm going to bend his nose a little bit. Tomorrow I'm going to go back and adjust his ears. I said, so every time you produce a piece of music, you're going to fine tune and fine tune. 
and fine tune. And don't be scared to record it. I said, we're not a perfected being, but we're all going into perfection. That's what Paul says, let us now in Hebrews, let us now go into perfection. So through this repetition of music, he started to realize producing music was like another Qigong exercise. And that the same way that we would do figure eights and everything, he would just, and he just got where he was producing music. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And that's what led him. But I saw him literally walk in, bow leg at one shoulder this high, <laughs> and the other from scoliosis, and couldn't even use his right brain to becoming what I call a new age version of Paganini. I mean, I can tell you, uh, you know, if you haven't seen his concerts, I mean, you understand, you go to New York, you're going to pay 75 to 150 dollars to hear a musician's level like he plays. And it's part of our membership. It's unbelievable. He does it twice a month. And if you can't be there live, okay, it's going to be recorded and you'll be able to listen to it. But David's been healing with his music now for three decades. I got to tell you, he's been healing people with his music for three decades. He's just gotten to the way, the level now that he's a, a real master of masters. But he can make that violin hit your soul i mean he can pull your soul right out of your body with his violin 